Bonjour, quel people du pomme de terre. Welcome avec le geek covered. Je m'appelle Penge et je mange la plume de ma tante. Aujourd'hui, je joue le ordinateur. Or, I don't know what that was. That was authentic French. That was real, actual Frenchian that I just spoke there. But you can run it through Google Translate to me if you like. But, you know, I'll be proven entirely correct that that was all really valid Frenchian. So, yes, hello everyone. Welcome to the geek covered. I'm Penge. This is Terroir. As you can see up here, it is a wine-making tycoon game. I don't know what I'm letting myself in for with this, apart from inevitable disaster, I assume. So yes, I don't really drink wine. I prefer to drink beer rather than wine, so I don't know much about wine. I know that there's red wine and white wine, and you can have screw caps and corks, and it comes from grapes. That's kind of about it. I don't really know much else about wine varieties or anything, so this could be quite a lot of fun, but we love a tycoon game in the Geek Cupboard. I like tycoon games. So here we go. We've done Tavern Tycoon, and we've probably done some other tycoon games as well, so let's try and become a wine-making person. One thing you might be wondering is, what is that? So, it, it's hard to read, but it is T-E-R-R-O-I-R, -R -R, which is pronounced terroir, which is French. And I had to look up what it means, because I didn't have a clue either. Apparently, the definition of terroir is the complete natural environment in which a particular wine is produced, including factors such as soil, topography and climate. So essentially it is the environment in which wine grows. So there's tutorials, they're literally YouTube videos because this is in early access because we like early access stuff as well so that's good. So uh, I've done the tutorials, well I've done them, I've read them, watched them, whatever. I've observed them and I sort of took them in I hope but I've not really played it. I've loaded it and looked at it and gone, ah, oh, looks fun. So let's start a new game. Okay, the first thing we have to do is name your vineyard. So, uh, presumably I have a chateau. Is this my chateau at the moment? I don't know. Here we go. Let's call it Chateau Penge. There we go. Chateau Penge. Very good. Right, here we go. So, let's pause time for a second. So, this is our world. I, I don't, can't remember how I move around it much, but okay, I'm not moving around it at all. So, this is where, this is my house. This is where I live. There is a well and some trees and a bit of wood, and that's jolly exciting. So, I have these tiles. This tile is an environment tile, I believe. How do I get rid of that thing? Go away. This is an environment tile. It's foresty. That's good. This is a vineyard sort of tile. So on here, I don't know what type it is. I don't know why I can't click on it either. But I'm going to be growing stuff on this tile. Now, as you can see around me are other sort of tiles of vineyardy style. So that is sandy soil. That's clay. That's loam. And again, now see, I, I don't know enough about wine to know what sort of grows in there. But yeah, ideal for Cabernet Sauvignon and Chardonnay. Good. Whereas that is for Sauvignon Blanc and Syrah. I've never even heard of that before. So you can, if you like, re-roll the tile to try and get something different. So you might get a water tile, like a lake or a river or something like that. You might get a different type of soil. Or you might get like one of these, the environment tile. Now I believe if these things, the sort of sandy, the soil tiles, wine growing tiles I guess, are next to environment tiles, they get a boost, you get an advantage. So these ones up here are all fine. Uh, that one's fine because if I buy this, but it costs a lot of money, so I have 35 grand. And let's say if I wanted to buy that tile, it cost me 15 grand, so let's not do that. So I think we have to move time on a little bit until something happens here. Now I can't move anything. I can't move currently. I don't quite know why I can't move about. I thought, oh, there we go. Now I can move about. Splendid. I can probably click on things again now, can I? So, here we go. Let's pause it. Let's go through what the options are. I don't know what that is. One of the wine merchants is now available to buy wine from you. That's flickery and horrible, isn't it? I, have I got some wine to sell? Open. No, okay. So here, this is the bank. So I can go to the bank, but I have no renown. So I can't take out a loan because you need a minimum of 3,000 and a maximum of your current renown multiplied by 2,000. I have zero renown, so I can't take anything out. This tile is buying little kind of ambient objects, it's called. Little goodies. So obviously, a sunbathers, there would be, there are water tiles. I think they're lakes. So you could, in theory, that might be a beach for all I know, but uh, you could build one of these. It costs $100. I don't know what it does for the wine. I don't think it has any bearing. I just think it's just a nice little fun thing. You can just make it look nice. Like that, look. A camper shelter out in the woods. I can't build 20 of them. There is a woods tile there. I could, in theory, buy a tent for $50. Just plonk it down in there and it just sits there. Now, I 
don't think they do anything. I don't have any bearing on anything. I mean, there's a wind turbine. Ah, this does do something. This is 10 renowned, so that actually gives you something. Whereas the other stuff doesn't really do stuff. Look, it just sits there not doing anything. That's fine. So, uh, I think I need to move time on. I think I need to... Ah, there we go. A thing appeared. So this appears over here. I can pause it now. This says, right, it's February. It's winter, February. Time to plant your grapes. So here we go. We click this. I'm going to choose to plant something. I have a choice. I can either plant Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay, good. It's a red wine for $5,000. And I pay $100 a month to upkeep it. Or I can plant Chardonnay, which is presumably a white wine. But it costs $10,000 to plant. And it costs me $150 to maintain. So right now... I'm thinking because I don't really know what I'm doing, I go for this. I do like the way it looks. It's got like a, quite a nice uh, sort of hand-drawn kind of classic look. It looks like a sort of very nice, you know, it's all proper like line drawn and it's sort of painted. It looks very sort of culturally apt, sort of Frenchy type of thing. So let's plant that. So now that plants. Now we have to wait for time to move on. So there's some other stuff to happen, but I have to do some trimming at some point because you have to make sure that when there's canopy on your wine on your sort of vineyard bits you have to trim off the extra bits because we want the ripeness to go up we want them to be ripe and obviously if they're covered in loads of foliage they can't ripen because the sun can't get to them so you have to trim things um i don't know what that noise is i've no idea what that noise is but it's oh it's raining is it somewhere is it raining is there rain it sounds watery um i don't know whatever there's a little butterfly flying around that's nice can we do anything with you no, it just tells us what that's growing. Okay, so we've got a ripeness of two at the moment, which isn't great, but it's not got a canopy on it yet. That'll get a canopy on it at some point. That, ex that oh, that's our chateau. Oh, I thought that did the other thing. That's our chateau. So we will upgrade it eventually at great cost to our proper actual house. But at the moment, it's just essentially a shack in the woods. And this expands that out. That's our wine cellar. So at the moment, we've got nothing in it because we haven't made any wine. But we will have soon. So we need the white, the ripeness to go up. It's three. This is good. So we need to get these ready just in case. Because they'll eventually get a canopy on them. We want to trim that back a little bit. So it's not so big. Because otherwise they cannot ripen. So we just want to make sure. We just want to trim that off a little bit. Just for now. Just to make sure that ripeness goes up. And if the canopy is on too long, they can get rot thing down here kind of says oh you've got fungal rot and uh or other diseases i assume because obviously it gets too wet and soggy and horrible so yeah so the year moves on so it's june we've obviously made no money at all we're paying maintenance on this so yes it's june july ripeness four beautiful we've got 1.1 yield of wine i don't know what the yield number is but whatever 1.1 tons i'm going to assume so ripeness of four is okay so we have to wait, basically. Little bits pop up above the things that you can action. And it says, right, yeah, now it's time for you to do something with this wine. So yes, look, ripeness, five. These are beautiful. 1.32 tons, I'm going to say tons, of grapes on here. That's lovely. August, yes, ripeness, five. Come on, let's see if we can get up to six. Let's see if we can. I don't imagine you can get up to ten. I don't know how it works. I've not seen any rain. Ah. There's a, there's a cloud with the sun be oh, with the sun behind it. Okay, fine. So yeah, I don't know when they do... Ah, right. So now look, we've got a ripeness of six. This has appeared above our head. So we can now do this. So this is what we've got. Our Cabernet Sauvignon wine has got acidity of five, sweetness six, tannins five, body of five. We've got 1.54 tons. Through a combination of excellent weather and canopy management, this year's grapes were exceptional. This wine gets plus one to its final rating if its final rating is less than three and a half stars. Yes, beautiful. So I fluked a very good thing where I just chopped some stuff down and it worked. So we'll do that. So now we have to squish them. And again, the nice sort of hand-drawn sort of old style sort of visuals. I do like that. So we have to squash it. We have to crush the grapes to make them turn into liquid. So here we go, you get a choice, but I don't think I can have anything at the moment. These things are all automated, but because I'm only in a little shed, essentially, I'm going to crush it with my feet. So I don't know how you say that. Piggyage? Pigeage? Presumably it's French, so P 
pigage, pigage, I don't know, whatever. Someone tell me how you say that in French, please. So this increases our tannins by two, which I think is what you want in a red wine, uh, and takes five seconds per varietal, don't know what that means, to complete. But yeah, so we'll crush the grapes with our feet. And each action you take has an effect on the sort of the quality and the stuff of the wine. So now they've squished it, we now need to put it in a barrel. So every two weeks of fermentation decreases sweetness by one. Now we might not want a very sweet wine. I'm not a big wine drinker, but I believe that drier wines are possibly better. But this is a red wine. Do you have sweet red wine at all? I've got no idea. So wine, like all alcoholic drinks, needs to ferment. The wine's sweetness will change depending on how long you ferment your wine. Perfection is only achieved through trial and error. So I think what we'll do is, for every two weeks, it decreases the sweetness by one. So let's do it for one month, and that should decrease our sweetness to sort of level four-ish. So now fermentation just ticks over, very slowly moving along the bottom. In fact, we can speed it up a little bit, because there's nothing else for us to do at the moment. We've got no other tiles to look at, so it's just this one. So now there we go, put it back to normal speed. Right, here we go. This is another thing. This is pressing. So this is squishing the wine. So for every 10% of pressed juice, your acidity increases by one. For your wine can be aged, you need to press the must. Now I had to read about that. The must is this juice that's not quite wine yet. Grape juice. So it's called the must. To obtain the fermented juices, use a slider to determine the ratio between pressed and free run juice. More pressed juice means higher acidity. So, not quite sure which one is what. Ah, there we go. So that's no pressed juice. So higher acidity. So let's go for that, shall we? So what does that do? For every 10% of pressed juice, your acidity increases by one. What do we want an acidy drink? Is like acidity six good? Or is acidity five good? I don't really know. Let's do that. It was on that by default. Let's leave it on that by default for now. There we go. So your acidity should go up one. So if pressed, now we need to put it in barrels. So, aging softens a wine's tannins and acidity, giving it a smoother and more balanced taste over time. The decrease in tannins and acidity stops certain values depending on the storage type. So, we can only pick one barrel, unfortunately. These are far too advanced white oak and stainless steel. We've got common French oak. Decreases acidity by one and tannins by two for every month you leave it stored. This is the most common variety of wine barrels. So I think we leave it for a month. We'll just basically put it in there if it decreases acidity by one and tannins by two for every month, we'll have acidity five, sweetness four, tannins five, body six. So, okay, that sounds good to me. And then we just leave it for a bit. So it's gone to autumn. So we can now, speed time on, let's get to January. I believe at some point it will tell us to grow the next crop. So let's get past December. Let's get to January. I don't quite know how you tell whether we're near it raining. Right, lovely, lovely. So it's still December, it's still winter, January. Right, let's go and look in our thing here. So it tells us now, there you go, acidity is four, sweetness is four, tannins is four, body is four. Okay, that, is that good? I assume that's good, and it's gonna get plus one anyway. So let's bottle it. So now we need to bottle our wine. Here we go. So here we go, you get to pick what you wanna call it. I'm just gonna go to Chateau Penge, Cabernet Sauvignon 2017. That seems relevant. I would rather have corks, I think wine with cork is better. And yes, we need a distinctive bottle. It's a red wine, isn't it? Ooh, that one, that one, that one looks cool. There, I like that. I like the darkness of the label and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's bottle nine. So it's gonna cost $5 per bottle and it's gonna cost us 5,400 just to get those bottles in. Good Lord, okay, fine. So now we can go to bottles and you have to organize a tasting. So we have to get three people in. So here we go. Boris, Meow, <laughs> Mr. Meow, Fern Bosch, Meow, Bosch, and Scorchito, El Scorchito. He sounds awesome. I like El Scorchito. Let's get him in. So they've not got much prestige, but I suppose the uh, most fanciful wine dudes aren't going to come and bother with us because we're just small fry. So yeah, let's invite those to a tasting. Oh my goodness. Wow! Okay, my wine is exceptional. The reviewers invited to the wine tasting have written their reviews. Good or bad, the word is out. The price of my wine has been determined by the words of a few, albeit powerful, critics. My final rating of my wine is Super Mega Wine. There we go. Good Cabernet Sauvignon is everywhere, but great ones are rare. Just like this little gem. Done. 
Okay, right. Now I'm just going to make a note, literally with a bit of paper and a pencil. A lovely mechanical pencil, click, click. Uh, about that combination. So Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon works well with acidity, sweetness, tannins and body of four. So now we've bottled our wine, we get to sell it. Woo! Let's see who wants to buy our wine. So it's what, 20 $20 a bottle. That's quite good wine, isn't it? So here we go. We get to choose to sell it to Fair or Bro Fair and Brothers, sorry, the Hugang Wine Market or Manhattan Sellers. You can choose to sell, well, I can't sell them all, obviously, because I've got 1,080 and I can only give 540 to, to there. So I can't sell all of my wine to one particular merchant, but I can split it up a bit. So let's give Manhattan Sellers 200. Let's give you 540. Let's give you 340. So I've spread it around a bit. I've spread the wine around. I've got no relations with them at the moment, but as obviously they sell my wine and the quality of the wine is good, hopefully I can keep that going, then yes, I'll get relations with them and it'll be better. And I believe I can charge more per bottle. So let's sell all that wine. There we go. There you go. It's gone up. Look, I now have two, two relations with them each, with each of the distributors. And I think as well, if you have higher relations, it then lets you sell more wine to them. But okay, so done. Now I just sit and wait for a bit. So I've got no wine now in my cellar. Now how do I see my profit? Where's that particular screen? Is it on the thing on the house? Do I go there? Uh, market? No, that's just telling me to sell the bottles. Oh, the how they sell the bottles. Okay, there is, there is a bit where you can check your finances. Ah, it's on here, isn't it? It's on the actual, it's on this bit. Financial report. So, oh look. Lifetime five star wines, one. I've started out with the five star wine. That's beautiful. So yeah, I've not sold anything yet. And I've basically just spent almost 15 grand. Or no, I spent nearly 20, just over 20 grand. Okay, so now I need to do this again. I need more wine to come along. So we plant it in February, I believe. So a little icon should appear over here. Oh no, it just grows itself now. That's just growing itself. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's good. That's good. We like that. It just continues on its own little way. So let's speed time on a little bit. Oh, look, we've just made lots of money. Hang on. Let's check. Let's have a look. Financial report. Lifetime revenue, that just said. Even though I've not made any revenue in there, it says lifetime revenue 21,600. That's got to be good, surely. That's got to be a good sign, hasn't it? Right, let's speed time on. Speeding time on. Going into March or in spring, the wine is growing. 34, I've nearly got more than I started with. A plane, there's a little tiny plane. Hello, little French person in a plane. The ripeness has gone up to seven. Okay, is, is that going to help? Right, I need to get ready to do some cutting of these things just when it arrives. I'm not doing it now, but when it gets there, I'm just going to trim back the foliage. Because we don't want it, because it seemed to work last time, and that's a good thing. So let's see if we can repeat that and do it again. So I need to wait for the things to appear. There we go. It goes like that. Then comes down. And then I there went. Trim. Like that. Just then. Just like that. I don't know if that's the right thing or the wrong thing to do. But it seemed to work last time okay. So it can't be too bad an issue. So let's do this again. So right. Hang on. Let's look at my thing now then. How do I figure out how many wines have been sold then? Market. Oh they've literally sold all my wine. They've sold it all, have they? Has it all gone? Has all my wine gone? Latest financial report. Revenue, again, yeah, it's not It's not really working too well, is it, this revenue bit? Total revenue zero for 2017. Ah, that's for 2017. Okay, right, that makes sense. Right, let's speed time on. Speeding time on. We need to make sure now, what's this treasure chest in the corner? What's that? What, open doesn't work. The treasure chest doesn't do anything. Oh my god, the, the, they're super ripe. They are super ripe grapes. Is that good? Is that what you want for wine? I don't know. What's that? Vine has been overexposed to the sun and stopped producing. Oh no, I cut it too much. 1.1 tons is okay though. Right, here we go. Let's go through this again. Acidity 1. Oh goodness me, this is going to be a bloody disaster. The body is 10, however, but everything else is very high. Okay, so we're done. So now we just need to squish it. So we still have no choice. So we're going to squish it underfoot. So it increases the tannins by two. Whatever. There's, can't get any higher than it is now anyway. So let's squish them. Now this is going to be key, isn't it? We can only put them in this barrel. 
We want to reduce the sweetness by quite a lot. So every two weeks reduces the sweetness by one. So that's going to reduce it by sweetness nine. That'll be sweetness eight. That'll be sweetness seven. That'll be sweetness six. Let's do that. Let's leave it to, to ferment for two months. There we go. Right, we need to be time on. We've got not much else to do at the moment. Yay, right, now we need to do this pressing thing. So for every 10% of pressed juice, your acidity reduces by one. Well, I don't want it to be reduced because it's already one anyway. So let's just do that. Let's just literally go, right, no. Begin pressing and do it like that. Now we have to put it in a barrel, but we don't have any choice. So we've got to leave it in the oaks. There we go. Now, what do we want to do with it now? This is intriguing, isn't it? Because at the moment it is quite tanniny and sweet. So we want to leave it for a little while, don't we? Possibly until February, but then, yeah, we need to get some monies in. I want to bring the tannins down a bit as well. So, yeah, let's leave it until February. Leave it until Feb, the end of winter, as this sees it. And that should have, like, matured quite nicely, like a nice mature wine. Right, okay, so here we go. The acidity is one, which isn't ideal. I would have liked to have had a bit more. But the sweetness, tannins and body are okay now. So I might bottle that. And we also have a thing here... Contrary to popular belief, it doesn't taste like dirt. Earthy flavour grants plus 10% to my wine's price. So let's bottle this up. So yes, yeah, so let's call it the 2018 Cabernet Sauvignon. Again, cork. And let's keep the same bottle like that. So we're going to have six bottles. Is that it? What? I don't know what that is. Six of six. Oh, barrels. I see. You can... Oh, you can choose the amount of barrels. Well, let's have the whole shebang. Then we need to organise a tasting with... Mr. Meow, Ms. Bosch, and Mr. Oh, we can get a different person in. Sorry, Mr. Meow, I don't want you. I'm having Fern Bosch. I'm having El Scorchito. But Caleb Elahi, with his funny beard, has two prestige, so he might give it a good rating, hopefully. Let's invite them in. Oh, it's a kind of rubbish wine. <laughs> I'll drink anything and give it a good review as long as it's free. But even I have to admit this wine. <laughs> is pretty crap. The winemaker should consider a career change. Oh dear, I obviously started out quite well and it's gone a bit downhill. So one and a half, oh dearie me. Do you know what? We might as well sell it. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can sell it. 1379, that's rubbish. Uh, okay, right, you guys can have 200. You guys can have 200. You guys can have 320. There we go, sell. Waiting to sell 200 bottles. Oh, our relations didn't go up at all. Oh, that was a bit of a disaster wine. Okay, that did not work well. Let's see if we can improve this year's wine. I'm going to wait a little bit. Here we go. Oh, it's already come up. It's already come on and it's in March. Right, I need to cut that back. That'll get over. Or oh, do I? Because then, then it'll be exposed to the sun and it'll stop growing. Oh, I don't know what to do. I, I can't do wine. Right, that looks a bit too thick to me. We're going to prune that back down like that. The ripeness is not very good though, is it? So I'm going to wait until May. And then I'm going to trim all that back again. Here we go. So yes, it's moving about. It's still not got any ripeness. Why is it not ripe? Come on, ripen. Right, trim that back down. And then we're going to trim it again because it's May. There we go. So hopefully that will improve the ripeness now. And it won't be too exposed to the sun. Oh no, what's that? Vine is suffering from fungal rot and its yield is decreased by 30% every month. Fungal rot, that's not a good sign, is it? That can't be good. Let's trim all that back. And again, why is the ripeness so bad? Ripeness 1 looks terrible. Is it because it's been raining all summer? Here we go. Come on, there's some sunshine. Get riper, please. We at least want 3. We want at least a ripeness of 3. Ripeness of 1, so it's like a raw, horrible, hard grape. There we go, 2. Oh, look at the yield. The yield is well down. Come on. Ripeness of three. No, I'm only going to get a ripeness of two. Oh, this is terrible. Okay, fine. We'll go for that. We'll make some more crappy wine. Okay, so we've not got much wine, but it looks okay. Fine. So we'll do that. Squish it underfoot. Again, piggy edge happening. Here we go. Squishy squish. I'm never quite sure of the... Uh, validity of that. I mean, do, do they wash their feet? So it decreases sweetness by one. So ideally we don't want it to be reduced in sweetness anymore. So let's leave it for less than two weeks. Now we can do this. We want the acidity to come down by one. 
So every 10% your acidity increases by one. Okay, we don't want that then. We want no press juice, so like that. Do that, stick it in a barrel. It decreases acidity by one and tannins by two for every month you leave it stored. So we want to leave it for one month. Oh gosh, right, this is gonna be early then, is it? This is an early thing, okay. So in sort of maybe the start of December, we want to get that wine back out and being sold. Let's just check. It's November. How's the wine looking? Let's check. 4344. Four. Right, bottle. That worked well last time. Cork. That one. Only three casks of it though. So yeah, we're going to be struggling. Here we go. Organise a tasting. So let's get Mr. Alaihi Scorchito. Let's get Mr. Meow in. We're not going to have Fern Bosch. Let's get those in. Yes, that's better. Three and a half. Yeah, it's great. I mean, on all Cabernet Sauvignon's great. Well, I think it's great. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers for the support there. Okay, let's sell that. We haven't got many at all. Are we waiting to sell 72 bottles? Oh, I can't sell. I can't sell the wine to anybody yet because they're still waiting to sell other bottles. Okay, that's fine. We can deal with that. We'll just wait until, say, December and then try and sell it then. Can we sell you the wine in December, please? Let's see. Can we give it a go? Sell. Wait to sell 56 bottles. Okay, right. So we've got to wait. Uh, okay, fine. So we've just got to wait for time to pass until they've sold all the previous stock before they can then start on this year's wine. Well, 20... Yeah, 2019's vintage. Okay, it's gone to 2020. Surely you must have sold it all by now. 40, 40, and 60. Come on, sell it really quicker. There we go. Had to wait till February to start doing all this stuff. Right. So they're going to sell it for twenty-one thirty-four a bottle, which is good. So let's sell, though, let's give them 150 because they had a bit less last time. You can have 100, you can have 110. There we go. Sell. Waiting to sell all those bottles. I'm done, I'm done. Okay, now we're going to do the same again. Now, ideally, we'd have a load of money coming in. Now, ripeness four is good. It's clearly a nice year. The year is nice. Bit of rain. Bit of rain's okay on this. I want to buy another tile. Ideally, I'd buy that one. What's that? Sandy. How expensive is that? 50 grand? Bugger off. How much is that? 20 grand for a loam tile. 50 grand for Sandy. 50 grand for Sandy. Loam. Are there any others? Pause it a minute so I don't miss anything. Sandy. Clay. 75,000. Okay, right. I don't think I can afford those types of things at the moment. Okay, let's just... Oh, I can't do it while it's paused. Yeah, I'd have to buy the loam tile for 20 grand then. And then I could put another one in. I could put, say, Cabernet Sauvignon or Chardonnay. What have I got? Cabernet Sauvignon. So I'd put Chardonnay in, for example. And then I'd have two types of wine. Rightness six. This is good. This is what it was last time when we had the really good wine. This is good. Right. Clippery things at the ready. Shears at the ready. Choppy, chop, chop, chop. Rightness seven. Lovely. A yield. A nice big yield out of it. Okay. The little sort of optimal coverage has appeared. Because now it's July and it's really hot. We want to keep them out of the sun a bit. So they've got some nice leaves on. Lovely, lovely. We don't want them to be under there too long though. Because then obviously the, they don't get enough sun. And the brightness or whatever goes down. Or they get rot or whatever. This looks like it's going very well though. Look at it. 1.32 tonnes. And brightness 7. That can only be a good thing. So it's August. So it's coming up to the end. Right, the brightness has gone down. Right, that's too much. Too much foliage. Okay. End of August. So in September, I might just chop it back. Ah, no, beautiful. I don't even need to do that. Let's get it now. While it's ripeness six, 1.54 tons. Yes, that's beautiful. And yes, through a combination of excellent weather and canopy management, this year's grapes were exceptional. Plus one to its final rating if it's rubbish. Yes, right. Let's do the stuff. Squish with our feet because we can't do anything else. Okay, so the optimal sweetness last time was four. So if it each two weeks decreases it by one, we want to have it in for a month. So let's leave it for a month to drop the sweetness down. And now this is where the acidity is going to increase by one. So we don't want the acidity to increase. So let's just do that kind of pressing. Stick it in a barrel. We can only have that. Yeah, see, eventually we do want our chateau level two. So yeah, for now, we're going to have to do that. So it decreases the acidity by one. And the tannins by two for every month you leave it stored. So we want to leave it for one month. That's all. So now that's in a barrel. We want to leave that, say, till the end of November, maybe. So right, so November's started. 
How does it calculate that already? Let's have a look. Nope, wrong button. Let's have a look at the actual button that I need to press. So, yeah, there you go. Already, look, it's worked. Acidity 4, Sweetness 4, Tannins 5, and Body 4. So it's one, the Tannins are one more than the optimal one we had last time, but I'm saying we bottle that right now. There we go. Beautiful cork. Let's do that one. It's our 2020 vintage. Bottle it. Get the people in to review it. Let's get, yeah, Mr. Elahi Scorchito. Let's invite Bosch back. Come on, firm Bosch. Here we go. Yes. Beautiful. Yep. Good. So I've got some very good wine. Now I'm going to try and sell it to you lot. 702 bottles. They can take each. I've got 1,080 bottles. Okay. It's selling for 29, 21. Okay. So let's have, you can have 300. You can have 300. You can have 350. And then let's give you 350. And then let's give you 380. There we go. So I've kind of done it evenly between them. So I'm not kind of favoring one across it. Or do I want to favor one across the others? Would that mean I can get more money per bottle with, say, Fair and Brothers? I'd give more to Manhattan Sellers, actually. Let's give Manhattan Sellers 450. And then let's drop their one to 300. And their one to 330. There we go. Let's see what that does. Ooh, oh, what's this? What's this? As long as your distributor relations are at five, Manhattan will buy your wines for 10% more. That's beautiful. As long as they're at five, you're to sell 100% of your bottles to Hu Gang. Oh, yes. As long as your distributor actions are at five, all work actions except clear forest and plant forest are free. Okay. I don't really know what that means, but jolly good. Okay, good. Oh, yes. And so now we just need to wait for some money to come in because I don't actually have any money at the moment. I can't afford to buy anything. So when I do get some money in, I think it's time to buy that tile. We're gonna buy another loam tile. Yes, here we go. Right, this might be stupid. Let's wait for January. Wait for January, see what money we get from January. Come on, give me a little bit more money. Come on, sell more wine. Yes, beautiful. Right, we're gonna buy this tile just here. We're gonna buy that for 20 grand. How much are the forest tiles? 15 grand, bloody hell, that's expensive as well. And the sandy ones are really, have, all the tiles are really bloody expensive. Okay, we need to do this. Add tile, loam. We've bought a tile. And that expands the rest out as well. So we can see now, oh, I can't do that. I, you can't move left and right while it's paused. It stops, it stops it entirely. You can zoom in and out, but you can't move around the screen for some obscure reason. So there we go. So we now have another tile that we can put some wine on. So it doesn't know what wine we're growing on that yet, so we need to choose. So let's plant something on here. So we've already got Cabernet Sauvignon down. I'm tempted to do this. It costs 10 grand to plant and $150. But we're gonna have to have a look and just see. Yeah, we can afford that. That'll leave us with a bit of money, but then if we get Chardonnay working as well, then yeah, we should be okay. Let's plant that. Let's go, live whatever. Let's live dangerously. Plant. Yes. So now we've got two different types of, of grape, which means we'll be able to produce two different types of wine. A red wine and a white wine. Oh, look. Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon. It's going very well. It's nice. It's February, but it looks sunny. Oh, a bit of rain. A bit of rain on the Chardonnay. Oh, gosh. Right, that's come early then. The cover has come early. Uh, do I want to trim it? Yes. Yes, I do. I'm trimming it back. I'm trimming it back. I don't know if this is the right or the wrong thing to do, but I'm trimming it back. That might have been a stupid thing to do. But I don't think they're going to be... If if in March they're covered in a big thicket of any leaves, they're not going to get very ripe, are they? Right, speed time on a little bit. Okay, the ripeness is creeping up. This is good. It's July. We've got ripeness of five. Oh, right, they're covered. Now, is this good? Yeah, I think that's probably a good thing. I think that's probably good because now it's going to be hot in the summer. We don't want it to get sort of burnt or overexposed or whatever. Oh, the ripeness has come back down. Right, we're trimming that and we're trimming that. Trim like that. Okay, oh, the ripeness of four is not ideal. Okay, fine. Pause. Oh, no. Oh, just as I was going to bloody press the button. It's gone down to three. Okay, this is going to be rubbish wine. Yeah, we're going to harvest this and it's going to be rubbishy wine. Oh, there's little people. There were little people. Okay, the Cabernet Sauvignon, 1.54 tons of it. That's good, isn't it? That's okay. That's quite a lot. 
that's actually not bad. 5, 3, 3, and 3. Now, Chardonnay is an unknown quantity. It's exactly the same in terms of its thing, but I don't really know what that needs. So I need to trial and error that one. So here we go. Pressing. So the Sauvignon, we're just going to do the same because we have no choice. Because, yeah, we can't do that because we haven't got to Chateau level 2. So, yeah, let's choose that. Let's crush those grapes with our feet, which is a little bit strange. But there we go. So they stamp on them. They squish them with their French feet, their hairy French toes. Right, now barrels. Again, we have no choice really about what barrel, but here we go. So we need to leave it to ferment. Oh, no, this is fermenting, not barreling, of course. So it reduces sweetness by one. So the optimal sweetness for the Cabernet Sauvignon was uh, was four. So we don't want that. We want that to be less than two weeks. However, this, I don't know. I imagine you'd want it sweeter than three. I don't know. I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to do that. Yeah, let's leave it to ferment for not very long. Right, the acidity was good if we had it at four. So for every 10% of pressed juice, your acidity increases by one. If that increases by one yeah i don't think i want it to do that do i want zero i don't want it to go up and again that i don't know but look it's a white wine for every 10 percent of press juice your acidity increases by one so it's the same so i don't know do i want do i want that i'm going to make it a little bit more acidy i'm going to increase it by one yeah let's do that let's begin pressing so now they're pressing it all now we stick it in the barrels so yeah, choose a barrel type French oak, choose a barrel type French oak. Okay, decreases acidity by one and tannins by two. So we want to leave that in for one month. So the Sauvignon is in for one month. The Chardonnay, however, I don't know about. Six, three, five, and five might be good. I don't know. Decreases tannin. I don't think we want it to be any less... I didn't think white wine had tannins. I thought red wine was tannins. Okay, fine. I don't know about wine. Please, someone explain to me about wine, apart from the drinking of it. I'm all right with drinking wine. I prefer beer, however. But there isn't beer tycoon. Or I don't think there is. Anyway, I have no idea. So, okay. I think we just leave them in there for... Um, I don't really want to leave that in there at all for a month. I think that is probably looking good. Cabernet Sauvignon, leave it in for a month. The other one, I think we can just get it bottled. So there we go. Let's go into the thing. The white wine. This one. This one here. 6355. Five. I've got no nothing else to go on, so let's try it. Let's bottle that. Ah, yeah, we had fungal rot. That's irritating. One star will be deducted from its final rating. Oh, bloody hell. Okay. Bottle that. We want a, a cork top, but it's white wine. Let's go for... Yes, this ridiculous shaped bottle. Why not? Yes, please. Oh, oh, hang on. I don't have enough funds to make this purchase. Uh, hello. I might need to go to the bank. Hello, bank. Can I come here, please? Uh, minimum of 3,000 and a maximum of your current renown multiplied by 2,000. So I can have 2,000 multiplied by 5. So I can have 10,000. Replay, repayment plan over oh, 7%. This is terrible. I, uh, fine, okay. Uh, repayment plan over uh, minimum of 3,000 and maximum of current renown. What? I can repay it over 10,000 years? What? Uh, no, how about not one year? That's stupid. Five years? Interest rate 14.5%? Are you joking? Bloody Nora's. Okay, no, how about one year? So if I borrow 10,000... I'm going to pay back 10,700. But all I need is 10... Oh, no, do I need more? How much do I need to bottle the stuff? Hang on. Hang on. Pause. How much do I need to bottle it? I need... Oh, do I want to go screw caps? Hang on. The white one could be screw cap, couldn't it? I prefer corks, though. Corks are better. I imagine you can charge more. Yeah, I'm going to need more than 10 grand, aren't I? I'm going to need, like, 20... Can I get 20 grand out from the bank? I don't think I can get that, can I? Oh, this is going to be bad. 10,000 over one year. Yeah, go on. Oh, what if it's over two years? I'll pay 451 a month. Yeah, okay, let's do it over two years. That puts the interest rate up a little bit, but okay, over two years. Yes, thank you for the money, bank people, you robin gets. Okay, right, let's go into the, go into the thing. Let's bottle the Chardonnay, quick. 
Let's do it now while we can. Cork in the stupid bottle. Bottle it all. There we go. Bottles. Organise a tasting. Let's get... Oh, there's someone else. Nancy Tresco. Let's get you two in and it's got to be Mr. Scorchito because he's got the best name. So let's invite you to a tasting. It's three and a half. So do I lose a point because it's got mouldy? Does that mean it's three and a half? Because yeah, look, one star will be deducted from its final rating. So I wonder if it was four and a half. Okay, let's sell that then for $26.88 a bottle. Okay, they're going to buy my wines for 10% more. That's good. Okay, let's give them 500. If they're selling it for that much, that's good. So I've got 580. So we can give you 250 and we can give you 330. There we go. Oh, I want to give them more. So we give them 650, drop theirs down to 250 and then drop theirs down. Okay, 220 and then 210. There we go. Beautiful. Right. Sell. There we go. So now you're waiting to sell lots of wine. Now we can't unfortunately bottle this wine at the moment, which is... Oh no. No, we can't bottle it because we can't bloody afford it, I don't think. Unless we put it in a screw cap, which we might want to do because that is kind of near the optimal thing. Five and five. Yeah. Do we want to leave it? It'll go down to four acidity, but three sweetness, three tannins. Oh, I don't know if we want to leave it. Do we want to leave that? I don't think I can afford to bottle it, can I? Can I cork cap it? No. So I can't do it with a cork. So I'd have to do it with this, with a screw cap. Do you know what? Bugger it. Let's do it now. Yes. Let's bottle that. All of it. Bottles. Organiser tasting. Let's get the new guys in. You two new guys. Mr. Scorchito. Invite to a tasting. Oh, it's pretty good. Okay, good. That's good wine. Let us sell it. Uh, sell it to... Uh, ah, okay. I see. Right, okay. Valuable lesson learned there. Because I've spread this out, I've got to wait for them to sell the bottles that they currently have before I can then give them this other wine I have. Okay, but that's fine. Let's speed time on and let's see how this works. So we're going to get some more wine hopefully we'll get some more money in and some more wine what we'll do is i think actually because we've been playing a little while i think we might come back to this i'm quite enjoying this i'm quite like the the, the clickiness of it and the way it goes so i think we might have another part of this i think we might do a second part a little mini series of this if you like so what we'll do is we'll come back later on we'll come back another time we'll see how our wine is selling Got to pay the bloody bank back for the money that they took off us. Right, look, it's sold a bit. 3,000 worth of wine has been sold. That's good. It's coming back down because I've got to pay maintenance on these anyway. So, yeah, okay, fine. So we know what we're doing. Well, loosely. We sort of loosely know what we're doing. Ish, kind of. So, yeah, we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll see how we're going with that wine. We'll see if we can then sell them the other wine that we've got. Yeah, we need more. We need them to accept more wine, really, don't we? But yes, I suppose, actually thinking about it, that is what, where is it? That's what those guys do. Their thing, as long as your relations are at five, you'll be able to sell 100% of your bottles. So you could, in theory, sell all of your red wine bottles to those, and then all the white wine you could spread between these two guys. But yeah, unfortunately, I cannot do that right now. I could sell all of them to the Hugang wine market later on. Once they've sold 132 bottles, they might have a great big red wine import going on. But yes, until then, we can't do anything. So yes, we'll come back. We'll see how the white wine's going. We shall sell the red wine. We shall grow some more. And depending on our profit, we shall get more land. It'd be nice if we could get a different sort of soil type, but they're really bloody expensive. 50 grand. And that one was like 75 grand, which seems very, very bloody extortionate. The wine is growing. We're going to pause it. We're going to leave it there. So for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Covered. And I will see you next time. Ted, run, 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 Ted, 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 run quicker, Ted. Oh, Ted is green. Oh, dear. Timmy is looking very bad. Okay. There's still the same amount of water. I'm guessing we didn't get robbed. Ah, we got robbed. In no way is this going to break the radio, Ted. And you've broken the radio, Ted.